Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. Today I got a package and I think I know what it is. I was waiting for a long time. Wait. Oh. Lots of packaging material. Ah, uh, <laughs> real big thing. A Genuino Maker 1000. So let's look inside. It's not very big, actually. It's a quite small size. It should have an ARM processor and Wi-Fi included. Hackster I.O. together with Arduino and Microsoft created a competition. The deal was that they will give 1000 MKR1000 spoken Maker 1000 boards for free to tinkerers who are willing to create something. They got around 4,000 project ideas and choose 1,000 of them. My proposal was part of the 1,000 and last Friday I got my Maker 1,000 in the mail. Unfortunately, with one month of delay. But what is the Maker 1,000 and why should you care about it? The Maker 1,000 is the newest addition to the Arduino boards and should lead into the future. Maybe it is the plan to replace the well-known Arduino boards over time. What is the advantage of this new board and how does the Maker 1000 compare with the well-known ESP8266? This will be just a short comparison of some facts including some tests and including some of my initial experience. The board is very small, half the width of the UNO and the form factor is more comparable with the NANO. It is slightly longer than the ESP8266 DOIT board and it is definitely breadboard friendly. So let's first compare it to the old Arduinos. First, it is 3.3 volt compatible and does not support 5 volt on any pins. This means it is well suited for many of the newer sensors and does not need any level shifters to connect with them. Very good. 5 volt anyway is a thing of the past and will disappear over time. Then it has 7 analog pins and 14 digital pins, which is very similar to the UNO or the NANO. In addition, it has a real analog output not just PMW pins as the Arduinos. The biggest addition, however, is the integrated Wi-Fi board. Like the ESP12e boards, the whole processing unit and the Wi-Fi is an independent module soldered as a whole to the breadboard. If you want to use it with LiPo batteries, you will love the possibility to connect it directly to the board and also load it via the USB connector. The necessary electronics are already on board. Memory is no more an issue with this board compared to the UNO generation. The Christmas tree sketch, for example, from my video number 36, needs only 4% of the program memory. The UNO needed 13%. The two concepts are not one-to-one -one compatible because one uses an 8-bit and the other a 32-bit architecture. You might have seen that the maker also needs much more memory for exactly the same sketch. But still, I think memory is not a big issue in the near future for your maker 1000 projects. Speed is another thing which sometimes matters. In video number 11 I compared the different MCUs. How does the Maker 1000 compare? In the integer and IO tests it is at least in the range of the ESP8266. In the floating point test, however, it is a lame duck compared with the ESP. 
it is even slower than the Pro Mini. I hope this is a compiler issue and can be corrected over time. The power consumption on 5V is quite high compared with the Arduinos and nearly the double of the ESP. It would be similar to the ESP on 3.3V and it has, like the ESP, very short peaks of up to 400mA. How does it compare to the ESP8266? It has more digital pins, 14 versus about 10, and much more analog pins, 7 versus 1. The analog pin of the ESP also is restricted to 1 volt. This restriction does not apply to the maker. The ESP does not have an analog output pin at all. It only has PMW pins. So there is a clear winner in this respect, the Maker 1000. Now we move on to the software part. Unfortunately, this is the bad part. When I got it, I tried it with my production IDE release, which is still 1.6.5. I did not find the Maker board, which is as expected. But since the Maker and the Zero use the same chip, I was able to compile and upload the Blink example. And it worked. I read that I have to use the IDE version 1.6.8 and preferably also the nightly builds. Because I did not want to change my productive environment, I thought this is a good example to use the cloud. Since a few weeks, Arduino.cc offers a cloud-based IDE called Create. But unexpected, the Maker 1000 board did not exist in this environment. So I had to leave this idea and use another computer to install the 168 IDE. I also enabled the necessary boards. You already see the problem here. The maker is not mentioned. And it became true. The Maker 1000 board is not available in the newest release of the board's definition. So I again choose the zero instead. With this, the sketch compiles and uploads. But serial does not work. For development work, this is a no-go. With Google, I found that I had to downgrade the board definition file to 1.6.3. And really, the Maker 1000 appeared and I was happy. I put the JSON string for the nightly builds into the preferences and started my test. Suddenly, I was informed that a new build is available and I loaded it. You might guess what happened then. The Maker definition was gone again. So, I was able to either work with old software or without serial. This is really a pain somewhere YouTube might not like, I tell you. To test the board, I decided to use my MQTT client of my video number 48, because it uses Wi-Fi. The initial code was written for the ESP8266. I loaded the sketch and replaced the Wi-Fi library with the one of the maker. There were a few minor changes necessary and the sketch run. The MQTT messages even arrived at adafruit.io. Success. But then I discovered that the messages had no content. After some investigations I discovered that the floating point to string conversion did not work. When I changed my variable to integer, also, the values arrived at adafruit.io. If you remember, the floating point performance of the maker was very weak. Maybe there are still issues in the IDE or the compiler with the floating point arithmetics. So, all in all, I like the board. It is quite small and has all you need compared with an Arduino Uno. And it has much more for the new world, like memory and Wi-Fi. 
I do not know the pricing because I did not have to pay for it. It should be cheaper than an Arduino Uno with a Wi-Fi shield, but it is very difficult to compete with the dirt cheap prices of an old MCU board. The software part is disappointing. It is as expected for a prototype, but if you send out 1000 boards for a competition, you should offer a little more than just what I found. But I hope this will change till the maker is ready for the market. Maybe the contest even helps to drive the errors out of the development environment. The last question, will I be able to participate at the contest? Probably not, because I only had 9 days left till the deadline when I got the board. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye.